Here is the Pine Swamp Shelter. Water source is down there. So you've got a fire going. Downhill is a trail. We have a picnic table and a few layers. A fire ring and Scotsman. Hey again. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Wish you well up the trail and hope to see you again. All right, y'all. We're moving. Laurel Creek is 18 and a half. The hope is to go beyond that. And uh, we're going 18 north. All right, it's 8 a.m. It's a little bit of a late start since the sun rose an hour ago. But uh, it was cold. It's 24 degrees this morning. Today is the last day of winter, or it should be anyway. Technically, it's been spring for like two or three weeks already because it's April 6th. But it's the last day of winter because it is the last day where it should be really cold like this. High of 42 today, low in the 20s again, mid 20s today. So we have that to look forward to, but then highs in the 60s tomorrow, all of a sudden again. I love coming upon like these types of trees in the trail. Cause then you like have to like bend underneath it and walk up to it and this is its height, according to me and uh, have to kind of come down here and my head still has to duck underneath all of that. So this is always fun dealing with. Those types of passes would be much easier without a big pack on, but when you have a big pack on, when you duck, you have to be conscious of the pack getting caught too, and know that the weight of the pack, if you don't choose to take it off, which I try not to, can uh, cause you to fall if you don't manage the weight well. Wow, look at that river flowing by. It's a mighty river. Good morning. It is Stick the Eagle here, and it is day 44 here on the Appalachian Trail. Welcome to the Appalachian Trail. I am so glad that you are here with us as we journey from Springer Mountain, Georgia to Mount Katahdin, Maine. So let's strap in and keep on trucking northbound. I appreciate nice little bridges like this and nice little stream to cross on a nice Saturday morning. Oh, a BSA troop did this, troop 55. Thank you, Boy Scouts. You all know I have a special connection to Boy Scouts, having grown up in the Scouts and working in the Scouts in the whole time. I think we have more downed trees to navigate. There's quite a lot of downed trees to navigate in this little stretch. I'm like, is this even a trail? There's so many blowdowns. I keep having to check to make sure I'm still on the trail. I'm like, far out, this doesn't look like a trail. And far out says, yep, you're still on the trail. But man, I've crossed like 10 blowdowns already. I haven't shown every single one of them. And most of them are big ones. So, anyway, makes the trail interesting in its own way. For my complaining about all the blowdowns, I appreciate this one. This one was a huge blockage. <laughs> but for about a two mile stretch of trail, it's taken me almost two hours with all the complicated passings. And of course, it's made more difficult with my pack. We are finally about to cross this river with this nice looking bridge. Whew. That's actually a nice looking campsite down there. I like all the benches and the sound of water is always nice.
So the AT actually crosses right there. But if you head over here to the Cherokee flat sign, you can jettison some trash. And that's about what I'm about to do. But uh, I am going to enjoy this while I can still get rid of the can that I got from Trump Magic today. It's certainly a good little bit of magic while I sit here at this lovely picnic table and uh, think about how that tree system or those down trees put me behind a little bit, but how it doesn't actually matter. I want to get to Four Pines by tomorrow night, and it's 47 miles from where I started this morning. But in the end, in the end, I just gotta walk. And uh, if I don't make it to Four Pines by tomorrow night, because of the trail conditions or how difficult the trail is, that's another case of expectations. I've gotta watch my expectations and uh, not have any. So I just have to walk north and see where I am at sunset and stop there and, and uh, then see if I can reasonably get to Four Pines. If not, maybe that will allow my, my uh, family, my trail family to catch up a little bit and that wouldn't be a bad thing because it's fun being with them. This is a cute little section through some rhododendrons and pines and it looks like a little like moss carpet almost. <laughs> Resting on the way up the hill. Ideally, I'd like not to stay with the group of five-day backpackers that I stayed with last night at the uh, Pine Swamp because they were a bit rude. When Scotsman came in, they were rude to him because uh, he came in about eight o'clock. These guys were in bed by like six and they got up at four o'clock this morning to hike on. Uh, so they have a very different schedule. And when I and Scotsman and I and a couple other backpackers were uh, talking at the picnic table. They were like, be quiet, we're trying to sleep. I'm thinking right now that if I were to get to Four Pines by tomorrow night, it'd be a 25 today to like Sauver's Hollow and a 22 tomorrow over, um, what's it called? Dragon's Tooth tomorrow. So I'm thinking about slowing down a little bit and maybe enjoying some more time with the Scotsman and possibly allowing my friends to catch up. So, I'm just reflecting because 25 feels like a lot today, especially after the slowdown this morning. It's already 10 o'clock and I've gone like four miles and uh, it's not flat miles either on the way up there. So, it's up and down and up and down a couple times. And I'm not sure exactly what the elevation profile is, but it's not an easy 25 miles. Like I could do 25 miles when a lot of it is flat, maybe when there's one mountain, but that's not the case today. I found some leftover snow up here as I continue to go up this hill. Here's the trail, we get to climb up. Here's the Forest Service Road. And uh, somewhere out there is where I was yesterday. <laughs> it's still a bit of a winter wonderland up here. <laughs> I still have out by tomorrow, but today's the last cold day, like I said earlier. But uh, hey, I appreciate the look of a winter wonderland. It's still super windy and cold up here. Not like super windy, not like windy like Hump Mountain windy, but windy enough. Uh, you can tell there's still snow around. That's the trail ahead of me right there. Um, right now I'm trying to reach the balance between what to wear again, like I always do on cold days, because when I'm going uphill, which I have been, I start getting sweaty. But when I stop, the wind is super cold. So I'm trying to go slow enough that I don't sweat, but fast enough that I keep warm. It's delicate balance out here. Well, the picnic table is a bit snow covered, so I'm not sure I'm using that, but here's the little privy, and uh, here's the shelter. The Bailey's Gap 
shelter. So I'm gonna hang out for a little break right here, see if there's a log book here. I think there is in that box there. Look at that reminder, start each day new. Here is my journal entry for today. So if you're not enjoying it out here, what's the point of being here? Maybe if I slow down a little bit, my friends will catch up because they're not that far behind me at all, as far as I know. I don't have service, otherwise I would try texting one of them right now. Um, but uh, yeah, enjoy it out here. Enjoy it while you're here. Don't just rush through the miles every day. Hey, Scott's men, good morning. Good morning. We well, don't seem to be able to leave each other. <laughs> How was your day so far? Oh, that was hard. Yeah. That was very steep. Oh. And all the down trees? After yesterday, that was, that was more than I needed. Do you have a high and low of this week? A high? Yeah. Let me think. <laughs> a high. Yeah. I thought the trail above... Parisburg was very nice. Yeah. The low. Before just, Parisburg or after Parisburg? Just before Parisburg. Yeah, Angel's Rest. Yeah, yeah. That was beautiful. It was very nice, yeah. That has to be my low at the moment. Not so much from the point of view, it's the worst bit. It's just that it's an eye. Don't agree. Yeah, 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 the uphill. <laughs> that was pretty steep, and also. My my low was probably the wind yesterday oh, yeah, on that yeah, ridge because yeah. that yeah. was something to get through. Yeah, that was a bit worrying. Okay, is there any awesome. water around here? No, there's no water here at this shelter. <sighs> Not to the next shelter, unfortunately. Not to the next shelter. Yeah. <sighs> Beautiful out here. Yeah. Let's enjoy it. Oh, I'm have a good night. <laughs> so, you Scotsman, we're talking here about. Um, uh enjoying the trail right and making sure that we enjoy Maybe. the moment here because we'll never be back here That's, well for me <laughs> being the scotsman coming from scotland i will never ever be back here ever again yeah and this is my moment here so it's important that i take it all in and enjoy it and it's important that i take the trail slowly so that i enjoy that too because there is no coming back unlike some people who are going to rush through this and not see any of it so uh, yeah, they you, lost my. Work you my said life. if somebody asks about uh, this particular place on trail and be like, "What what do you think about this place?" Oh yeah, well I mean if you think about it, if you rush through, and you meet somebody who's done the trail and they say, "What did you think of uh, this Bailey Gap Shelter?" and you go, "Bailey Gap Shelter? Was I there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I must have been moving far too fast to remember Bailey Gap Shelter." And that would be sad yeah. to not be able to share that experience with someone that you meet. Uh, somewhere else you, you need to be able to share experiences as well as have them amazing amazing thanks for your reflections Not and you do that in this moment too yeah. <sighs> all right here's your 12 o'clock tip for today it's not quite 12 o'clock but you remember me here <laughs> If you find yourself just worrying about destination every single day, slow down. Slow down so that you can embrace the journey, not the destination. Too often we start rushing when we're trying to do a trail or complete something uh, that needs being, that needs done, that we're trying to do for recreation. And, uh, when it starts turning into a job, like I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to get this far this day. It's all about the uh, destination and not the journey. And uh, we're out here to enjoy the journey, not the destination. I could just do the destination, go to Katad and hike Katad and super easy. I've already done it once, but I'm here for the journey. So with that journey, I'm going to slow down. A little bit and not rush 22 and a 20 or 25 and a 22 in these next two days and uh, I might just do 12 today and uh, stay with someone I know and enjoy the evening 
Uh, enjoy some extra time editing or whatever I need to do. Just enjoy the evening, get some extra sleep, some extra rest. And then uh, start early, cover however many miles tomorrow. When it's supposed to be warmer and probably more enjoyable anyway. And then uh, Monday's supposed to be nice too, to do uh, Dragon's Tooth. Plus this trail is a bit rocky and a little slick. So I have to be careful. So it's just as well that I'm slowing down and not trying to cover 25 miles because each of these rocks are at a weird angle and uh, you have to be careful where you step. <laughs> and it's very rocky. So take your time. Another decision factor is that the group of six suction hackers are planning on going to a Laurel Creek shelter, which is the next shelter after War Spur. And they left at like 4 a.m. this morning. So, and they get there at like 3 and then start going to sleep. So, they'll they'll fill up the shelter because it's a six person shelter. So, there won't be any shelter space for me there. And uh, I really don't want to set up my tent on top of snow because then I would get it wet. And I'm trying to keep it dry. All day long we get to climb over trees here on the Appalachian Trail. There's a really old marker right there. So yeah, get to straddle this tree now. And as if you thought we were done, <laughs> I just crossed that one right over there. This is how rocky the trail is right now. Yes, the trail is sometimes a boulder field to navigate like this. What a little campsite here. We are back with the bitterly cold wind coming from this direction. It is a uh, the west. It's 36 degrees with more 20 to 30 mile per hour winds. I feel like I'm walking through a tunnel of red bushes that likes to try to snag at my pack and whatever. <laughs> this has been going on for a while. What are these things? They're like six feet tall and hanging across the trail. Like, who knows? <laughs> so the day started with me dodging like 12 down trees in the first two miles, which slowed me down. And then it continued with some snowy and or icy rock hopping for a while. And now it's bushes that want to whack me in the face and I've eaten a few of them because they just, they just whack me. Um, if I'm not looking and going slow enough that I can defend myself against them. <laughs> so, it's been slow going today, but that's okay. Not the 25 mile day that I planned, but it's okay. Because uh, it's better to enjoy it out here than it is to just push the miles, you know. So that's what I'm doing. So we are here in the Mountain Lake Wilderness. This is the AT. We're almost at Wind Rock. And then we go down there to Kelly Knob. So that's where we are. I like how it says in the bottom, Appalachian Trail, you're standing on the AT, 2179 miles, a little more than that now. Start hiking. <laughs> I also like this quote, Henry David Thoreau. I went to the woods because I wished to live life deliberately to front only the essential facts of life and not when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. Yes. <sighs> That's good too. All right, AT, let's start hiking. <laughs> or continue hiking. We have arrived at the turn off for Wind Rock. Do you think it'll be windy up there? By the way, there are a few pretty good places for tents right below the rock right here. And it's pretty much out of the wind because this little hill is blocking it. All right, you all can see this as I see this. 
for the first time. Oh yes. Wow. 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 Let's go up here. Okay. It's windy. <laughs> By the way, I believe that immediate tall ridge line is the border between Virginia and West Virginia that I was following yesterday. Somewhere out that way. And the um, Allegheny Trail that I saw yesterday continues along that ridge line for a while and then goes into West Virginia. Well, that was a beautiful, beautiful sight. But I could not stay there more than five minutes because it was super windy and cold. So the plan at the current point is to stop at, at uh, the next shelter, which is about five miles away. It's only 2.30 right now. So I'll probably get there about five o'clock, which is a little early to stop. Um, but if, I'm only do, if I only have 35 miles left into Four Pines and I don't want to go to the next shelter because it's going to be full. I know that because of what the section hikers told me. And I'm not quite sure I want to tent tonight. I have not had enough service to look up the updated weather forecast to know if it's going to be completely clear or not. Again, I don't want to get my tent wet. And uh, there may or may not be snow on the ground. It's kind of snowless here. Um, but different places have snow um, depending on how much the sun gets it. So I may stop there and get a long day tomorrow and just get up early, maybe before sunrise and uh, see how long I can go and leave a short day into Four Pines so I can have some more time relaxing there. And then uh, I'll make the plan from there. Maybe I'll work in the plan from Four Pines a little bit tonight and see what's going on, but I'm not gonna create too much of a plan because that's expectations. Let's just walk north and see what happens. I'm also still wearing my pack cover. One, to dry it out from yesterday, because I don't want to pack it away unless it's completely dry. And two, because it's still really cloudy and I don't know if it might start raining or snowing or anything like that. So it's easier just to have it on. I still have my winter gear because it's still really cold out. It's like 36 degrees and windy, depending on whether I'm behind that ridge or not. Um, I still have, believe it or not, my puffy on underneath my rain jacket because it's been that windy and cold and I haven't started sweating. If I do, I'd take it off, but it's really hard to know because if I go back in that ridge line, I get too cold. So I'm trying more to go slow so I don't sweat and just take the slow day, knowing that tomorrow will be a lot warmer and I can probably go a lot faster without worrying about wearing the puffy and this jacket. I'd also kind of like staying at the shelter versus tending by myself tonight because I'd like to hang out with the Scotsman one more night before I probably leave him behind. So I think that'd be fun instead of to be alone in a tent site somewhere to uh, have a little bit more community again and appreciate the friends I made along the way. So it's Dick here and I met the uh, two who uh, actually gave me a ride up the half mile from Woods Hole Hostel, so I didn't have to walk it the other day, whatever day that was, like two or three days ago. <laughs> um, but uh, it was great to meet them. You're going Sobo today. What were your trail names? I'm Tender. Tender. And I'm Trawler. And, Trawler. Um, we're both retired. We uh, live on a boat, and we're doing a flip-flop uh, through hike started at Damascus. Damascus, go all the way to Katahdin and then go back, back to Springer. Back to Springer. That's so the you plan. said you get the Great Smoky Mountains in the fall, which will be beautiful. Yeah, we'll
We're, we're looking for perfect weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope you get it. More such, so than I There's did. not such a thing, but maybe nicer weather than, you know, if we just started. Yeah. You know, the other I way, hope so. you get nice weather too. Though. And the greatest Thanks. thing about the trail is the, the people like stick the eagle that we meet on the trail. So. Absolutely. The people you meet, the people who randomly offer to give you a ride like you guys <laughs> did up the up the half mile road that doesn't count in the morning it's like i have to do a half mile before i we think the do same the trail, way like, so. oh, it doesn't count. <laughs> right yeah. anyway thank you so yeah. much it's great to meet you again and happy trails yep. thank happy you happy trails to you. maybe we'll see you again yeah hope All so right. so they started in damascus and then they're going to go back to do damascus to springer in the fall but they're doing it a, a very creative way because they have two cars and uh, they drive north and then uh, go whichever direction they want to um, to cover all the miles and they have a car parked at each end. So um, they, they are planning on doing nights in the woods as well. They do do nights in the woods um, for sure. Um, so then they'll park the car at either end of the longer section um, so they get the you know trail experience. But hey, it works and you're covering all the miles. So it's a creative way and you know, on some of the colder nights, I wouldn't mind having a nice car to get to either, um, where I know I can turn the heat up and get warm real quick. We're just doing the traditional Springer to Katahdin route here. <laughs> but uh, there's so many different ways to cover all the miles in the Appalachian Trail. Here we are, the mile 666 campsite. So, a nice little campsite here here at 666 this is what it looks like it's what the trail looks like it's been a pretty easy grade recently so actually a really nice camp spot it's really grassy which i wasn't expecting so and a nice spot to sit in the log right here or over there so yeah just like to show you guys some of the campsites right here so a text came through from Nichols and Frizzle saying that they miss me, I miss them too. And uh, apparently the place they were staying last night, they were having a watch party of my channel. <laughs> That's so sweet. I mean, they were in some of them, but... Uh, and Casper told me that they have a YouTube channel now. Um, Casper and Frizzle and maybe Gazelle. Haven't had a chance to check it out yet, but a text came through. I can't load YouTube, but it's called Meet the Trail Girls in the Appalachian Trail. So I'll have to check that out at some point when I can. The trail after Wind Rock has been pretty easy, which I very much appreciate. It's a very nice walk out here. This place is called Lone Pine Mountain. I do see more than one pine, but at least there is a pine. Lone Pine Mountain. All right, this will be fun. <laughs> so we're going down now, and uh, next we get to jump to that ridge line over there. Well, this looks like a cool brand new sign. I like it. That not as new, but all good. I like the new one. Feels nice to touch. <laughs> I met another Sobo through hiker who has a 2023 tag. I think it's remarkable the number of 2023 Sobo through hikers with those tags I've been meeting. They all started somewhere in between June and uh, August, and they're working on finishing the trail before the 12 month is up. So, obviously, if they started June through August, they still have plenty of time to finish the trail. But I wonder, like, what it's been like to hike through the dead of winter. I'm sure they took a number of days or possibly even weeks off trail, but still, it's remarkable to just use a 12-month calendar through the wintertime. Look at that remarkable view through the trees there. Isn't that gorgeous? It'd be more pretty if the trees weren't blocking it, but we can see it because they don't have leaves yet. Amazing. I have to stop here to fill my Cenoc, because look at that. Easy scoopable, easy, non-needable to scoop. <laughs> I can just fill it up just like that with that flow. Again, this is how I filter water, collect the dirty water, 
or the non-treated water in this bag and then bring it connect it to the Sawyer filter which will automatically filter anything out of it and bring it into my smart water bottles where the filtered water is that I can drink. The shelter is only a mile and a half from here down the hill so I don't mind carrying a little extra water when I have no guarantee that the water source there is going to be cascading like this one and I like the ease of picking up water from cascading water sources rather than trying to scoop it from a pool. So, I just read a text, but I couldn't respond yet because I don't have enough service to respond, but I got it to read, and uh, it's from Mark, who's been sending me uh, care packages from the troop with a bunch of, uh, from my voice got troop with a bunch of peak refills in it, and uh, I so appreciate it all, all the packages and time and money he's been spending on me and the troop leaders. They say they want to do it, and it's their gift to me, which I very, very much appreciate. He's the guy who uh, taught me the backpacking merit badge and introduced me to the Appalachian Trail back when I was a teenager in Boy Scouts. And um, he just told me that he was mailing out the package to Staminals, which is in Waynesboro, Virginia. So now I'm like, seriously, I'll be in Waynesboro in a week from now? That is crazy. That's, that's the entrance to the Shenandoah National Park where I'll be at places that I've been before. <laughs> I just can't believe that I'm a week away from Waynesboro. Let's go. Let's keep on hiking. That gives me motivation. Laugh out loud. This is the trail dodging more trees. The only way to get under this one that I've found is literally to sit down and uh, slide underneath it. <laughs> Did I mention that I get more sleep at shelters than I do in hostels? <laughs> I'm just thinking about how well rested I'll be after stopping early tonight and uh, my body still feels good. So I've got a lot of sleep and I'll have a couple of slow days into four pines because I couldn't quite swing it to get there tomorrow. I still have 34 miles from this current point and I cannot split that up between the rest of today and tomorrow. So I'll have a few slow days and then because of all the sleep I'm getting and rest I'm getting in shelters and or tent maybe tomorrow, I'll have lots of rest and sleep and I'll be geared to go if the terrain is good and the weather is good, I will be ready for maybe some more big mile days. I'm talking 20 to 25, maybe more, depending on the terrain. Look at that. The trail goes on that ridge line next. If I didn't say the reason I get more sleep in shelters than hostels is because every time I'm in a hostel I'm worried about making good use of the Wi-Fi to get my videos uploaded because sometimes depending on the Wi-Fi it takes a lot of time and uh, sometimes errors can happen during the night so I am more comfortable seeing it go through and waiting. That is a gorgeous view as I come down this hill. I love it. It's still 38 degrees, but I'm down on the other side of the ridge line now, so there's less wind, so it feels less cold again. I think one more reason for staying in the shelter tonight versus going up to some campsite somewhere is not being exposed to that wind. On the, on the last night, hopefully last night, that is supposed to be deep into the 20s. So, should be a nice warm night in the shelter versus up on some ridge somewhere at some random campsite between shelters. This is kind of a nice spot. There's mountains on like three sides of us, so no wind. I smell a campfire. That means somebody's already made it to the shelter. Now I hear voices. Let's see who's there. So the last time I saw this guy was Trimpy Shelter, like eight days ago. Yeah. PBJ is back. <laughs> it's good to be back. And I saw in the logbook at whatever the last shelter was that Stick said he was going to take a couple chill days. And then yeah. I heard from some day hikers where he may or may not be. So I decided to come on down here and 
may end up doing another six miles, so we'll see. Yeah. Gotta get some food in me first, though. That's what I'm doing, too. Dinner right here, and then uh, then seeing what we do. But oh, yeah. I was so surprised to see PBJ here, and so happy, because yeah. he's one of our nine that have been traveling close, kind of close together. So. Yeah. Great to Sweet. see you. Good to see you. Dinner tonight is beef stroke. Hey, this is... This is a really good water source for this shelter. There's a bridge up here for the actual trail. Alright y'all, slight change of plans. The uh, section hikers, the six of them who uh, stayed at the Pine Swamp with me last night, uh, basically filled up the uh, shelter here. So I figure if I'm going to tent anyway, why not get a few extra hours of hiking in since there's still two hours of daylight. So I'm going to keep walking. The next shelter is only 5.9, so I might make it there um, and then see what the situation is. I'd probably make it there between 8 and 8.30, probably more like 8.30 because it's almost 6 o'clock now. So I'm just going to keep walking for a while, go up this mountain, get this climb done while it's cool, and, uh, you know, just get more miles in. Because why not? If I'm going to tent anyway, and maybe, just maybe, I'll make it all the way to the shelter and there'll be space. There's also plenty of private tent sites like that around, so if I find one out of the wind, there's an initial 1,300 foot climb and then get on the other side of that ridge and the shelter is down 1,000 feet or so. I have only gone 12 and a half miles today because I was taking it slow, so my body still does feel pretty fresh. I also have full water, full 2.4 liters from that water source, uh, and uh, I, I even cooked with the extra water I still had in my knock bag. So I'm ready for a good hike and uh, don't need to worry about getting any water before the night, the night before the night fall. But I'm gonna do a bit of uh, sending it and uh, speed walking as much as I can until I get to the next hill. And then uh, send it up there. I took my puffy off for the climb. I still have my raincoat on for the temperature. By the way, you all, PBJ will catch me again tomorrow. He's very fast at hiking. Not so fast because I like capturing views like this. It's pretty. I love appreciating the beauty of these places. Look at all this pretty flat land sur surrounded by uh, <clears throat> mountain ridges here. This is a gorgeous, cute little area. The rhododendrons have changed into mountain laurels on this slow and steady climb uphill. That's the second one that was just too tall enough to step over, but too low to duck. So second one I had to get on my hands and knees for today. <laughs> it's okay. It's part of the adventure. This has been a pretty good gradual climb, which I'm very happy with. So I've been able to make some good time. Plus I've been refueled by my good dinner, my peak refuel. So I feel like that always, a good meal before a climb always helps make a good climb easier. I think I'm going to start doing that some more. Having a good meal late afternoon at a shelter and then going on a few more miles. It's working out pretty well. By the way, the crew is very nice tonight. They made room for a uh, Scotsman in the shelter. And uh, they were very nice to talk to. I was talking to them for a bit. Uh, they stopped at three o'clock because they felt tired, uh, which is fine. You know, do whatever you think you can do in the day. It actually might turn out that I'm proud of myself for doing uh, a few extra miles rather than just 12. Clay would have left some energy in the tank, right? This is when you round that bend. So it just came around. Looks like the top and then you see there's more, but it's okay because we're having a good climb. It's a bit of a climb, but it's fun. This is why I'm out here. I've reached Rocky Gap. It's windy, so I'm gonna keep moving, but I've done 1,200 feet of elevation and 2.8 miles in exactly one hour. 
that's a pretty good momentum after a good dinner, right? We're still going up, but we're almost there. I'm starting to lose my momentum, but that's okay. There's the sun starting to set over there amid the clouds. That's beautiful out here. Well, what a climb. We've about reached the top, folks. <laughs> nice spot. Not much of a sunset with that cloud there. Well, look at that. I've only have uh, 2.5 miles to go to Laurel Creek Shelter and uh, 1.3 to Overlook. It's only 7.30 and I have 2.5 to go. I've covered three and a half miles in an hour and a half. I think this is the campground, but I'm not staying here because it's a bit too windy. I'm doing the two and a half miles downhill and uh, might be able to get most of the way there before it gets dark. Yeah, little campground, old little bench here. Um, and uh, obvious spots for tents right there. All right, we walk along this ridge line for a mile, I guess, because I said the Kelly Knob Overlook is this way. And then uh, we go down. So if I see the sun, I actually do see the sun a little bit, but mostly cloudy. But if I see any more colors, I'll let you know. All right, good night, Appalachian Trail. Good night, Appalachian Mountains. Who said stop at 12 and a half miles? Oh, is that me? Oh, my bad. <laughs> but I can handle much more than that. Look at this late push I did. It's like 12 and a half miles. Yeah, I know. My body does need rest sometimes, but it feels great right now. And uh, it almost feels like 15 mile day or 18 mile day is almost to rest now. Like a 20 plus mile day is gonna be my thing. Anyway, I'm so glad you watched today. I had fun today. I hope you did too. Even though it was cold, started with some snow around. We took a lot of breaks because I was thinking it was gonna be a slow day. So we, we, uh, we took breaks a lot, but that was okay. Got some time with uh, uh, Scotsman. So that was nice. I gotta put this in the background right now. Look at those colors. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> you can't see it as well as I can. Maybe it'll be, maybe it'll get better. But anyway, gotta spend some time with Scotsman. PBJ caught us. He'll catch us again tomorrow. He stopped the tent at the shelter. <sighs> but I'm glad I continued on. I'm glad I continued on. So, we're on an AT journey. If you would like to join me on future episodes of this AT journey, please be sure to subscribe and remember to embrace the journey and always happy trails. Ah, oh, look at that pink. Lovely, lovely pink. Just beautiful, right? That's amazing. I just have about a mile left now. A little more, maybe a mile and a half to get to the shelter. So it's uh, only a quarter of eight. So not bad at all. The sun is setting. I might just need to pull out my headlamp to get down there, but not a big deal at all. Also, if you want to follow along for live updates, make sure you follow me along on Instagram. Same handle as my YouTube, at Stick the Eagle. So now, embrace the journey and happy trails. It says Kelly Knob View. 120 yards. Let's see if we can still see anything out there. Well, people have camped here before. It's almost tempting. There's a couple flat spots anyway. There's our view, but we can see out there. There's some hills, there's some sunset colors, 
and uh, there's some lights and some faraway town. There you go. Here's a Kelly Knob view. This is a fairly steep downhill. A little bit of night hiking doesn't hurt. Well, will you look at that, folks? Laurel Creek Shelter. I have got it all to myself. I walked up with my red light just to make sure I didn't disturb anybody, and uh, I'm alone up here. So the last one was full, and this one is empty. I don't mind that. By the way, it is a quarter to nine.